A growth medium is fairly straightforward to make, but you will have to prepare it in advance. It's got just six ingredients, which I've weighed out in advance, but you can find the precise quantities on the SAPS website. I've got some water, to which I'm going to add some of this stuff, Marishiga and Skoog, which provides minerals and vitamins. Next, I'm going to add some sugar, and that provides energy. This is kinetin, which is a substance that will make the cells divide. And it's really important that you get the quantities of this quite precise. Now, you need very small amounts of it, which is difficult to measure out precisely. So SAPs recommend that you use 0.1 gram of it dissolved in 100 milliliters of 70% ethanol. And then you use 2.5 milliliters of that. I'm now going to split this quantity into two to make the next step easier. The next step in the process is to add some agar powder to the solution, and you do this for each beaker. It's important to note that you're using plain agar, not the nutrient agar that you may be familiar with. It's also a good idea to sprinkle the agar in gently, otherwise it has a tendency to clump together. So once the agar's had a chance to be stirred thoroughly, remove the flea from your beaker. And then get this ready to heat up in the microwave. And that's simply a matter of taking some cling film, covering the top of the beaker, and piercing some holes into it. One of the great things about this practical is you don't use an autoclave, but a microwave to bring this solution to a boil. You simply put it inside the microwave and heat it in short bursts of about two minutes whilst watching carefully to make sure it doesn't boil over. So that's nearly there. I'm going to prepare to take it out by putting on some gloves. As with any liquids you're heating in a microwave, it's important to be really careful when handling them. And that's boiling away quite vigorously now, so I can stop it just by opening the door. And what you're looking for is a nice, perfectly clear solution. If it appears at all oily or gloopy, you need to put it back in to heat up some more. This is looking perfect for me, so I'm going to put it to one side while I prepare the final ingredient, the disinfectant. The disinfectant solution is really easy to make. I'm going to use these tablets, which are often used for sterilizing things like baby bottles. Now, they do come in a variety of sizes, so it's important to make sure you have the right size of tablet for the appropriate quantity of water. And again, you can look that up on the SAPS website. You simply take the tablet out and drop it into the water. You can buy sterilizing fluid, but it is in fact a different chemical to the one in the tablets. So make sure you use those and not this. When this is ready, I'm going to add some of it to the agar solution, but I have to do that in the fume cupboard because there is a possibility that chlorine gas will be produced. This is my agar solution and it's cooled down enough 
so I can handle it, but it's still quite warm to the touch. I'm going to add my disinfectant solution. I'm going to give this a stir with a glass rod, which I'm going to clean with some alcohol, just to make sure it's sterile. So this is now ready for pouring, and you can use any appropriate container as long as it's sterile. I'm using these handy little vials for two reasons. Firstly, they've got a convenient line to pour the liquid up to, and secondly and more importantly, they arrive from the manufacturer clean enough to use. I've made enough solution today to fill about 80 of these. I'm pouring the liquid here in the fume cupboard, but you can do this bit on the lab bench. I'm leaving the lid slightly ajar so that steam can escape, but once it's set, you can keep these in the fridge for up to six weeks.